Hello and welcome back. In today's video, we will have a look how we can use the difference blend mode in an interesting way. If you want to know more about how the difference blend mode works exactly, check out my earlier video on a detailed explanation of the difference blend mode. I will put a link to that in the description. Let's start off by adding a gradient from black to white. Easy way of doing this is adding a rectangle and use the gradient tool. The gradient started from white and ended in black. I just wanted the opposite. To do this, I can either change the beginning and end colors, but in this case, I will use the reverse gradient button at the toolbar. This will swap the begin and the end color of the gradient which is exactly what I'm looking for. Now I will add a fill layer and set the fill to 50% gray. For comparison purposes later, let me mask it by adding a rectangle and using this as a mask. So we still see a small piece of the original underlaying layer at the bottom. If I change the blend mode of this fill layer to difference, let's see what happens. Interesting, the midtones have become black and the outer parts of the gradient, the shadows and the highlights have become grey. The intensity waveform also shows this in a very nice way. We start from brightness 50 and move to 0 towards the center and then move back to 50. If I change the gray value of the fill layer, I can move the center point of the black area. What does this mean? Well, by using the difference blend mode with a gray fill, we target a specific brightness level. In this case, we make it black. To make things interesting, Let's add a curves layer to our gradient and play around with it. If I make the curve flat in the middle, we get black. This makes sense as the base layer is also grey. If I lower the black point to its original position now, we notice that only the highlights are black. If I move the black point to the top, the end result is still the same which makes sense as the difference blend mode always returns an absolute value. You can also see this when I lower the white point. The curve we currently have is an invert curve, meaning everything that was black is now white and vice versa. If you look at the result of the difference blend mode, it is exactly the same as with a regular curve as you can see now. So adjusting the curve layer, we can fine tune even further what brightness level we want to target. Now let's use this info we have on an actual image. I will move my image group to the top and enable the image. To keep things in sync, I will use the duplicate link for the fill and for the curves adjustment. Because I have duplicated the fill layer and the curve as linked, any changes we will make on them will also be shown on the bottom two bars to give us an idea what is happening. Looking at the current result is very difficult to comprehend because of the colors. Let's make it easier for us to understand by converting the copy of the image to black and white. A quick way of doing that is adding a channel mixer and setting the mode to grey. This will make things easier to explain. Looking at the two bars, we know the midtones have been darkened and the shadows and the highlights have become grey. Well, this is also exactly what happened in the image. 
Everything that is close to black right now are the midtones of the image, and the rest is close to neutral grey. Interesting, isn't it? If I change the grey level of the fill layer, you notice it moves the area that becomes black in the image, as you can also see in the bar below. So I can make lighter tones darker or the darker tones darker. If I set the fill color to white, we basically invert the image. And if I set it to black, nothing happens. Let's have a look at the effect of the curves layer. By changing the curves layer, we can also control which areas of the image are getting black. If I move the black point and the white point close to each other, you notice that the black gradient gets narrower. So we are targeting a more narrow brightness range. Let me reset the curve and show a couple of interesting curves. If I increase the value of the black point, you see we are targeting more of the darker areas. The same applies for the white point. Decreasing its values will increase the effect on the brighter areas. Another interesting effect, which I also mentioned earlier, is that it doesn't matter whether the black point is on the bottom or the top. Basically, all values have a positive offset from the midpoint we defined, which was a neutral gray. So moving the white or black points above or under the middle line does not make any difference, only the distance from the middle line. Here's a curve where we can target the highlights only. You definitely see that in the image. Everything is gray and the highlights are dark. We can also do the opposite. Let's keep it like this. We have targeted the shadows right now. The shadows in the image are now in the black area where the rest of the image is neutral gray. Now comes the interesting part. What blend mode can we use where the neutral gray has no effect? Well, it is the overlay or the soft light blend mode. Let's change the difference groups blend mode to overlay and see what happens. Let's disable the group and we notice that the dark areas in the image are darkened. Pretty cool. Just a reminder, if you're not very familiar with the overlay blend mode, the overlay blend mode will darken everything below 50% brightness and will lighten the areas above 50% brightness. Because our difference fill layer limits until 50% brightness, it helps us to apply the overlay effect only to specific brightness areas we choose with the curves layer. If we would like to brighten the dark areas, I would need to make the blacks white. To achieve this, we can use an invert adjustment. I will also make a duplicate linked copy of this adjustment and move it to the gradients below to see what's happening. You notice how the dark areas are brightened without affecting the rest of the image. If we look at the bottom gradient, we understand why. The blacks have been inverted to white, while the invert had no effect on the gray. Let me disable the invert adjustment for now. And play around with the curves adjustment. Just look how the top gradient moves and how it affects the image. Remember the left side are the shadows and the right are the highlights. By playing with the curves we move the location of what is going to be darkened. And enabling the invert will do the opposite. So instead of darkening it we will brighten it. And you get these nice kind of effects. Ok, let me keep the curve like this, where the highlights are targeted. I will also turn off the invert layer. So, this darkens our highlights. Of course this looks bad, but we have another tool we can use. The blend range of the group. Make sure the group is selected and press the cog icon in the channels panel to open it up. Excellent! If I now lower the effect of the group on the highlights for the underlying layer, we get a very nice subtle blend. If I turn on the invert layer, we brighten the highlights instead of darken them. 
Here are some other ways to darken the image in an interesting way. Let's change the curve, followed by changing the blend range and we get this nice effect. You could also have multiple copies of the group and use a mask to apply it to specific areas. For example, I will duplicate the current group and turn on the invert layer, which brightens things up. I can add a mask now and invert the mask. Well, this is not right. Interesting. Well, the reason actually is that the invert layer of this duplicated group is linked to the original. So, if we turn this on, it will also be automatically turned on in the original group. In order to unlink the invert adjustment, I will select it and open up the links panel, and then click on the unlink icon. Now, the invert layer is unlinked, I can enable it without having it enabled in the other group. On the mask of the group, I can now paint with black to brighten the model's teeth and eyes. This definitely helped, but we can make it brighter by inverting the curve layer. The end result is of course too much. We can lower its effect by using a soft light instead of an overlay blend mode. The effect has been considerably dimmed. We can go back to the curves layer and increase the brightening to make the effect a little bit stronger again. Let me adjust the first group so we get a nice darkening effect. As you notice, I changed the curve layer and the fill value until we get something that feels good. This looks about perfect. I will go back to the second group and paint with white on the mask again to get some extra shine on the hair. As a final step, I will make another copy and remove the mask. This copy I will adjust it so it darkens the image. I can do this by turning off the invert layer and adjusting the curve layer. In order to have a good darkening effect, I will also adjust the blend range of this new group to affect the darker areas instead of the highlights. Let's apply a mask to the group and invert it. Now I can paint with white on the areas I want to darken. The lips and around the eyes are good candidates for that. Also, to get more depth in the face, I will also paint the shadows in the hair and around her face. As you see, using this method we can fine tune our image in a very subtle way. Let's have a look at the before and the after. Not bad at all. I feel the white on our teeth is a bit too much. One way to fix it is to repaint the mask of the lightened group with grey instead of white. I will also do the same in our eyes, so I dim the brightness a little bit. The end result is definitely an improvement. Just a disclaimer for you. 
This is just one way of doing these adjustments and there are many other ways on achieving the same result. I just wanted to share with you how the difference blend mode can be used for creative purposes. What I also like most about this technique is that the amount of control you have. By adjusting the curve, the fill color and the group blend range you can get a very controlled effect. Feel free to experiment with the various layers. For example, you can use a color instead of a neutral gray in the difference fill layer. When you adjust the curve and the group blending ranges, you definitely will get interesting effects as you can see right now. I hope this video has inspired you to experiment with this technique and create amazing compositions. The goal of this video was not to show you how you can quickly do something, but to give you an understanding that even a very uncommon blend mode like difference can be used creatively if you understand how it works and that you should never be afraid to experiment. Thanks again for watching and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Until next time.